video the deadliest killers from compton it doesn't matter whether you think it's baby lane or poochie or dr dre or ice cube who killed tupac or biggie they come from compton compton is a city in southern los angeles county california united states situated south of downtown los angeles compton is one of the oldest cities in the county and on may 11th uh 1888 was the eighth city in los angeles county to incorporate uh the city has a total population of 96,456 people. It is known as the hub city due to its geographic location. Now, the most famous group to come from Compton is N.W.A. Niggas with an Attitude was an American hip-hop group whose members were among the earliest and most significant popularizers and controversial figures of the gangster rap subgenre. And the group is widely considered one of the greatest and most influential groups in hip hop history. Uh, Compton gave birth to Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and it doesn't matter. We're going to take a look at all of it. We're going to dive into this thing, guys. We're going to take a good look at it. Now, uh, we're going to, the murder of Tupac Shakur, American rapper, he was fatally shot September 7th, 1996 in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas, Nevada. He was 25 years old. The shooting occurred at 11.15 p.m. when the car carrying Shakur was stopped at a red light at East Flamingo and Koval Lane. Shakur was struck by a four, a, a, by four forty caliber round fires from a Glock. Two in the chest, one in the arm, one in the thigh. He died from his wounds six days later. Every time I speak, I want the truth to come out. And even if I get in trouble, you know what I'm saying? That ain't that what we're supposed to do. It's, I'm not saying I'm going to rule the world or I'm going to change the world. But I guarantee that I will spark the, the, the brain that will change the world. Walmart, Tupac Shakur is clinging on to life. The rap artist gunned down in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas. I just didn't think it was real until, you know, got my things together and drove out there and uh, saw the situation. He couldn't speak, but he, he was looking at me. He was trying to communicate, but he couldn't speak. The Reverend Jesse Jackson comforting the mother of rapper Tupac Shakur, a distraught MC Hammer rushing to his good friend's bedside. The worried faces of friends, family, and fans keeping a round-the-clock vigil at a Las Vegas hospital, where Tupac Shakur is still fighting for his life. Friends, family, and fans are praying God gives him another chance. In Las Vegas, Stephanie Frederick, Beaten News. Now, it doesn't matter who killed him, whether it's uh, Poochie, Baby Lane, Dr. Dre, Ice Cube. It, they broke our hearts. When they killed Tupac and Biggie, they tore the heart right out of the American, the African American community. We really love Tupac. And we were crying, tears were everywhere. It was uncontrollable. Jada, she breaks down. There's a problem. We we we're brokenhearted when they murdered. Tupac Shakir, when we find out the Marvin Gaye of rap is gone, we're devastated. All we could do was talk to people. Tupac was one of our representatives like Malcolm, like Martin, you know what I'm saying? And now Tupac gone, that was our voice. With my love for Tupac and my people, 
I, I mean, it, I'm lost for words. And I called up everybody and said, everybody call everybody and just come show your love because there was few that hated him and many that loved him. That was it. You'd have to ask our Orlando Anderson, wouldn't you? And we can't make, the police can't make anybody talk to him. If people at the scene who saw what happened would have come forward, we might have had some information to go on. I, I think this case is never going to be solved, OK, unless something extraordinary happens. But police can't solve a crime with that help of, of witnesses. Certainly, there had to be tons of witnesses there. No one came forward. And people close enough to see what happened right. didn't see anything. That whole gang mentality that I can't talk to the police, we're not talking to the police, that's why that crime was never solved. It wasn't the police lack of trying. It was that none of the witnesses would cooperate. Suge Knight didn't come to the detective bureau and talk to the detectives until three days after it happened. And he brought three lawyers. When have you ever heard of a victim? Civil court. They claim there is evidence he was in the white Cadillac that night in Las Vegas, that he got out and fired the shots. From 1995 to date, have you ever ridden in a white Cadillac? No. Do you know anyone who owns a white Cadillac? No. Anderson, an alleged Los Angeles gang member, has vigorously denied any involvement in the murder and in depositions claimed he was not at the scene. The estate. Were you involved in any way in the death of Tupac Shakur? No, I was not involved. I mean, I'm like a victim. You know what I'm saying? I feel, you know what I'm saying, sorry for him. And, you know, like I said, I was a fan of him. Now, this lady here claims to be a behavioral expert. And she claims to be able to tell a human to tell if you're lying or not. She says she's a human lie detector. And she says that because Orlando Anderson repeats his words, he's guilty of killing Tupac. She said because he has a deep swallow, he's guilty of killing Tupac. She says because he stutters and, and he's guilty of killing Tupac. She says because he doesn't want to face the past, he's guilty of Tupac. Uh, she is using her ideas and her technique to convince the world that Orlando Anderson killed Tupac. She reminds me of an attorney that you would get in the, of someone who would represent you in a county jail, a psychologist who would sell you up the river and make sure you got life in prison for something that you didn't do. Judging the man. It, it, the, there are plenty of people in prison for crimes that they didn't commit because simply because they had some type of behavioral psychologist come up and testify and say, look at him. He's scratching his nose. He's pulling a bug out of his nose. He's, he's scratching under his arm. He must be guilty of something. So they have deemed Orlando Anderson guilty of killing Tupac simply because he can't make eye contact. He doesn't make eye contact. So if you don't make eye contact, you're guilty. If you swallow, you're guilty. If you repeat the question, you're guilty. So we're going to take a look at and see uh, who's guilty of doing what. We have a video coming up. Is this the real motive coming up of the murder of Tupac? Look at the boss. You the boss of that road. Look at the gun. You understand? But I'm the underboss. I'm the copper. That's my job. For the protection of all of that road, to do what's what best for all of that road. And Snoop, to do what's best for all of that road. My decision wasn't based on I'm coming to death road taking shit over. My decision was based on Ray not being there for Snoop doing his trial. And this is all for real shit. You understand? And, and they, he, he wasn't producing shit. Other niggas was producing the beat, like on my album. Other niggas was doing the beat, and Dre was getting the credit. And I got to go on MTV and be like, yeah, he did this, he did that. No, he ain't doing it. He is a dope producer, but he ain't working yet. And I got 
got tired of that. I, I didn't think we needed that. I, mean, I think we didn't need that. But he was owning the company too, and he's and he killing. He's owning the company. He's killing us out. Fucking dick eating pussy. I'm out here in the street. You know what I mean? Whooping niggas ass, starting wars and shit, putting it down, dropping the album, doing my shit. And this nigga taking three years to do one song. I couldn't have it. But it was not my decision. It was still the decision. Still the one that, that was coming to me. Because I was soft on it. Like, you know, we're fucking, we're just keeping it dark. We're, we're talking to Ice Cube. He's, the murder is still unsolved. Who do you think killed him? Do you have any idea? You know, I have no idea. You know, from what I see, you know, from what I understand, it seemed like some kind of hit. Um, it don't seem like random violence. So, um, you know, it's, it's, you got to ask about the people who, who wanted him dead, you know, um, or the people who wanted to to get other people blamed. You know, the thing is, it's like, and it, it, it was a situation, you know, when you feud in public, you know, if somebody come knock you off, then everybody going to think the other guy did it. So it's always room for opportunists to stick their nose in there to, to get the pot stirred. So you just never know. <clears throat> We're talking to Ice Cube, so you don't necessarily buy into the idea that the Tupac and Biggie murders were connected one to each other and that was an East and a West Coast rap feud. Uh, I definitely don't I definitely don't believe that with Tupac. I don't think Tupac's death had anything to do with the East Coast, West Coast beef. Uh I'm not sure about Biggie. You know, because Biggie happened after Tupac was dead, so what uh, what kind of relationship did you have with Tupac? That's not a very good sign. Now, she says that because he's smirking and because he's thinking, doesn't want to say different things, he's avoiding to get caught. I mean, I've been thinking, you know, maybe I'm an escape goat or something. I just want to let everybody know, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I didn't do it. Now, Dr. Dre says something very disturbing in his album. Uh, the Chronic is the debut studio album uh, by uh, American hip-hop producer and rapper Dr. Dre. It was released in, on December 15, 1992 by his record label, Death Row Records, and distributed by Interscope Records. Recording sessions took place in June 1992 at Death Row Studio in Los Angeles and at Bernie Grunman Master in Hollywood. Now, Dr. Dre says something very disturbing to me and the, uh, in his interview, and that is he doesn't, he hates the chronic. He hates his own work. He doesn't, he can't stand to listen to the chronic. chronic. He it is going down. We got Dr. Dre up in here, man. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Dre, what do you remember the most about the chronic? Now, the chronic, we say classic. And that's not a, a name that you, a, a title you just throw away. That is a classic album. And I, I think everybody that. in this room yeah. owned more than one copy of The Chronic. Either it yeah. was on album, it was on cassette, it was on CD, your homie stole it out your car for whatever reason. <laughs> well, you know what? That, was, that, that particular record, man, that was like, that's like, I would say, the toughest record that I recorded in my career because, you know, it, it was right after my separation with, um, with Ruthless, mm -hmm. and um, I was in survival mode. And, you know, going from that to the organization that I went to, you know, and all, all the things that were happening during in the studio during the making, it was crazy, you know. Um, during, that, during that process, my house burned down. Damn. I was shot in the legs, damn, you know what I mean? Damn. And um, I was in the studio on crutches for, for a couple of weeks, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was a lot that went into that record. I, I, it was blood, sweat, and beers that went into it, All you know right. what I mean? And um, so that's one of those records that I don't even listen to anymore. Really? Yeah. I have really? a, I have Is a, it emotional? Do you listen? Like, why, why you know, not? I just don't I just don't really like being taken back to the to the to to that era. I hear you. You know what I mean? I hear you. What was what, what? Understand this is Cube, not Calvin. So exactly. That's exactly different. who I want. That's might be a little different. <laughs> who I might turn in the Eddie on my <laughs> <laughs> Who killed Tupac and Biggie? <laughs> 
You know, I think both of these dudes were assassinated in some kind of way. More Biggie than Tupac. I think Tupac might have uh, got killed by a dude that they that they you know had an incident with earlier that day. But Biggie's is seems a little JFK. government. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, you've seen the video, you've uh, seen the uh, suspects, you've heard them speak, uh, you've heard Dr. Dre, you've heard Ice Cube, uh, you've heard Baby Lane, and according to the behavioral expert, uh, when someone is stuttering or they repeat the word, they're trying to figure out what they got to say so they won't incriminate themselves, then they're guilty. And so you, applying those theories of the behavioral expert that if you swallow, uh, if you repeat the phrase, if you stutter too much, if you avoid eye contact, if you show that you're giving too much thought process, that you're trying to avoid getting into trouble. I want you, the jury, to put in the comments, who do you believe are the real killers of Tupac Shakur and Christopher Wallace. Put it in the comments. You've heard Ice Cube. You've heard Dr. Dre. You've heard Baby Lang in one setting. We're in court. Who killed Tupac Shakur? And if you solve this case, you also solve the the Tupac, the Biggie case in Los Angeles. So we're going to give you a chance to solve this case. Who killed Tupac Shakur? God bless you. God keep you. Uh, give me a like. Subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much.